There's a different view. That's looking down river. If there's any splashes, you're gonna see them. Doesn't seem to be, doesn't seem to be any fish here though. Definitely no bears. They're probably up at the house eating chickens while I'm down here. But anyway, let's see what we got. I'm gonna grab some shears here. By the time you're listening to this one, we would have been up at 4.30 in the morning, 5 o'clock, and we are fishing our brains out. Hopefully looking to win that derby, which would be kind of fun. Shit, somebody's coming. Hmm. Had to move shop. It's like some, uh, I don't know who there were, some worker guys showed up to have their lunch or something, the company truck down there. Funny, it's a little isolated spot, you never get caught down there. I can't stand an audience when I'm sitting here talking to a camera all by myself. So, I'm up and around the corner on this old uh, road in the big timber. And if you do see me looking behind me, it's only because I'm going to make sure one of those big hungry bears isn't just slowly walking up behind me. Because they're up top here spread around somewhere looking for a meal right now. And uh, from what I've seen, not too many of them have that much respect for humans yet. So, And I don't think you guys can scream loud enough for me to hear if there's a bear coming behind me, right? <laughs> <clears throat> All right, here's another one from yesterday's video. Replies from law enforcement. Let's listen to this one. Hey, Steve, you asked a question to law enforcement, basically about when would we draw the line. First, let me say, please don't armchair quarterback law enforcement slash military. Until there is a trial and or evidence about a situation, don't jump on a bandwagon. Second, you're obviously a stand-up guy, honorable to the point, and I've followed your channel for years. Definitely someone I respect and would share a beer with over a campfire. Third, officers took an oath to protect the citizens, citizens of the area they work in. I took an oath to defend the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Same as any profession, you have, a, you have good guys and bad. I would die defending your rights. All I ask is wait for all the facts. The line is when the tyrannical government's Tyrannical governments give bad slash unconstitutional orders. We'll stand with the people we swore to protect. Tyranny must be stopped at all costs. I have a couple of encounters for another time. You have the platform. Now is the time for good people to stand up. Sorry for the long email. Stay safe. My condolences for Mr. Macaroni. Lost my first working canine to cancer. And second one to organ failure. Losing our animals sucks balls. Alex. Yes, it does, Alex. Thanks for the kind words. Thanks for the email, man. Absolutely appreciate it. And, uh, you know, it's funny waiting to go to trial. With some topics, I mean, that's great. With other topics, especially currently today, the more I look into, the more many professionals look into and share the knowledge. Um, it appears that the courts, the trials, are actually protecting the bad guys right now more than they aren't especially when it comes to what's going on with our health currently, right? Um, I think I shared the cover of a video, yesterday's video, for everybody to please go look into, and I'd, and I'd actually encourage you to look into that too, unless you already have. And then, and then it's like, you know, just like the title says, now what? Now what do we do? You know, like, um, there's overwhelming evidence that this is a biological warfare product. It's being instilled upon the people. Um, we're being forced basically forced to get it. And a lot of people may disagree, but it's true. Here in Canada, it just was implemented that we cannot go and vote into walk into the building to vote unless we have that vaccination. <laughs> how wrong is that? But anyway, like I said a while back, I wanted to know exactly how, who we can sue if what gets forcibly injected into our bodies um, kills a family member or disables you for life, who can you sue? The fact is you can't. They've made it impossible. So, now what? Now what do we do? Who do, who do we rely on now? What do we do when it gets far worse than it is now? 
what do we do? What are we going to do? You know? That's the questions I would like answered. Um, and on that note, there's a family here who my friend, who someone very close to me knows and is friends with, and they have been absolutely outspoken and very confrontational when it comes to the current pandemic. And they're absolutely in support of social distancing, masks, vaccinations, the whole nine yards. Not allowed to go here, not allowed to go there. They're absolutely in support of vaccination passports. Well, guess what? The entire family had all three different shots. And currently today, the family has posted on social media that they all have COVID-19. <laughs> so when you come across these facts, and that's a fact, when you come across that fact, and then you watch what's being opposed on the people today, the divide, the pressure, the false statements. What do you do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? That's what I, I'm trying to tell everybody. It's, it's the people. The power is in the people. And there comes a point where we all are going to have to band together, law enforcement, military or not, and do the right thing and put an end and a stop to the frickin' insanity. How do you do that, right? Here in Canada, we currently have a leader who, who let go, fired an indigenous woman in cabinet who has more integrity than he, his family, his complete family combined. And she was let go of her entire career because she would not join in illegal activities with the prime minister and his group of little gangsters. Now she's out of a career, she's gone. He's still a power. What do we do now? <laughs> you know, what do we do now? It's a very frustrating thing. I'll tell you what. The people are being pushed today. They're being pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed. And uh, something's going to have to give, right? Nobody's, not everybody's going to fall in line. They're just not. The mainstream news outlets are promoting false information. The numbers aren't adding up what they deliver to the public as, a, as compared to what's really going on with the people, as proven by a world demonstration uh, thrown down just a few days ago. But anyway, thank you so much for your email. Please email back again. Thank you for your kind words, your support, and uh, we support you, okay? And uh, but the key is to have you and other people in law enforcement talking with the people as members of the people. It's not us against you, you against us. It's not us and them when it comes to law enforcement and the people. We're supposed to be all in the same basket together, right? And when I have law enforcement email me, that proves that we are in the same basket together. Thanks again for sharing that, man. Big piece to the puzzle, please read. All right, you got it. Marcus is red. Hello, Steve. I have a friend. She's a medium and has been gifting a family of Sasquatch for almost four years now. They have a really good relation. So good that she even goes at night into the forest to take food for the family with no problem. She told me that one she told me that the one that told her this was the oldest of the family group. We would speak to her telepathically in short word sentences. What I'm about to tell you can be a big piece of the puzzle. She asked, where did you come from? He said, we're all, we were once like you and some of you will become like us. She said, I don't understand. He said, no warning, radiation my people hide underground. She asked him if there was any way they can help us. He answered, accept us. We were beautiful people like you once. She started crying when she told me this. Steve, I've had started to connect the dots, and I think that this can be the reason why they have seen, been seen near, new, near or in nuclear power plants. These beings know our true past. That's why our government is trying to so hard to keep them in secret and even killing them. That's the end of the email. That's a mouthful. Telepathically absolutely believable it's been it's been shared far too many times from far too many people the fact that telepathic communication is very real you can't have tens of thousands of people recording the same thing and it not being fact right interesting email 
probably a follow-up on that with a little more information probably be a little more handy for the people too if you want if you feel compelled to one day all right sasquatch less than 10 feet away in the uk <clears throat> the uk that's interesting to me too it's funny i've mentioned before how many people we've had from the uk email email in it's been quite a few now but also, <clears throat> it's funny how many people in the UK feel compelled to email in to shoot down the characters of those people in the UK, followed with, there are no Sasquatch in the UK. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? But I've taken note of that. Let's get on to the email. Hi, Steve. Hope this email finds you well. I've been visiting a private pine forest near to where I live, northwest UK. I've become aware of these forest beings watching me being ever so subtle and letting me know they were there, covering their noise, making with, the, making with the wind, young ones I presume, playing tricks. So I wasn't 100% it was them until I started leaving apples for them and bearing in mind there was no other wildlife in this forest apart from the odd passing wood pigeon and a load of pheasants being reared for shooting. So when the apples were being taken, I knew it was them as I placed them seven feet up a tree. Anyway, one evening I'm in the forest and start to hear a lot of growls and grunts but coming from the other side. The forest is only about a half a mile square. It sounded like two badgers fighting, but I thought it's a bit early in the evening for them, so I was a bit puzzled as to what it was, as there was no wildlife, so I thought it must be the forest beings. Then the noise started moving closer, so I made out like I was leaving, as I knew there, would be, there could be a watcher with eyes on me. As I rounded the bend in the forest track, I decided to duck under a bush quickly and lay lie and wait to see if it was them. The noise of this argument got closer and closer and now sounded like what I could only describe as what I would imagine two cavemen would sound like. Now it's really close and I decided to make my presence known to them. But as I emerge, thinking I'm going to see these beings, with insects crawling out from under the bush and standing upright, I hear a wood knock. So loud I nearly shit myself. A joke, not my feet left the f a joke not a joke not my feet left the floor it frightened the life out of me it could have been more than 10 feet away but i could see nothing but having been told i wouldn't be harmed i start to tell them that i mean them no harm and i'm just curious as to who they are no sooner had i finished speaking a voice answered sounding like a caveman type voice and told me to get out well i didn't need telling a second time i can tell you i was of I have been back a few times, but not at night, and have seen X made out of two trees. So I know they are still there, but this is only five miles out of the town centre of Bolton, UK, where I never really expected to find them. But it appears they are worldwide and in just about every forest. If you know the signs to look for, what amazes me the most is how they've managed to stay hidden for so long. I know that there is evidence of them here in the UK as far back as the 16th century. They were known as the Green Men, and even depicted in some English coins. End of email. Thanks for that. And as you say, it's amazing to you how long they've managed to stay undetected. Actually, I would like to add, say, possibly from my point of view, is it's amazing just how well the human population has been led to think it is a joke and not real. Um, these things have not concealed their existence from us at all. They have it. More to contrary, right? They've been wrote about, spoken about, sung about first indigenous people on in all continents since time began. These beings have not kept their presence unknown. Um, the, the human beings, or whoever it is who's in charge, has put out an absolutely amazing effort to keep all of us second-guessing not only Sasquatch, but much, a lot more other topics, right? What a massive effort. What a massive effort put forth to keep this topic suppressed. Unbelievable. And it only makes a mind like mine want to find out why. Why? What do you got to lose? What is whoever, whatever group it is, what do they have to lose by allowing the majority of the human population to honestly know of the fact that these beings are running around the planet today? Why? Right? It's a big question. We get to the answer that get. You find the answer to that question, you find the answer to everything, I'm 100% convinced. I want to know why. 
I don't want this ride to end without knowing. It's not fair. I want to know why. Stocked in New Mexico, summer 94. Steve, love the channel. Even though I disagree with you on the pandemic of vaccines, but you have the right to your opinion just like I do. I respect that. People seem to have forgotten how to disagree with someone, but still respect each other these days, which is unfortunate. True enough, eh? True enough. But on that note, if you disagree with me, just keep note that I am pushing, number one, I'm pushing for everyone to look into everything they can, no matter what, before they make a decision for themselves. And I also am pushing for people to protect the right they have to speak openly about any topic. That's what I'm all about. A little about me. I'm a retired military pilot and spent over half my career working in air defense. Yes, we have seen some weird, unexplained things in the skies in North America. That's for a different channel. I was stationed in Mexico from 92 to 2003, during the summer of 94. My friend Sean and I went for a midweek multi-day hike north of Santa Fe. We began to the Borrego Mesa campground, following the trail along the Medio Rio, uphill for about seven miles. We camped the first night in a clearing where two streams meet. It was a perfect spot. It rained that night, and Sean was soaked along with his gear. What he did not realize is that the Vietnam-era air mattress I had kept me high and dry. When we got up, he wanted to head back instead of continuing on our planned three-day hike because his stuff was wet from the night before. We packed our things and began hiking down the seven miles back to the trailhead. Within about 30 minutes, we realized that I was slowing him down because of a nagging knee injury. I told him to go on and I would meet him at the car. It was maybe 15 minutes after he left, I started to smell it. It was like rotten, wet, large animal, very pungent. Then I started hearing something walking on the trail behind me just out of sight. Whenever I stopped, it stopped. Whenever I walked, it did as well. It definitely sounded bipedal. I also remember looking over my right shoulder up on the ridge with a distinct feeling of being watched. This thing shadowed me like this for a good four hours. <clears throat> I wish that I would, <clears throat> I wish I would have turned around and walked back towards it, but I was not armed and unprepared for any kind of encounters. As I was approaching the climb up to the trailhead, the smell and walking abruptly stopped. <clears throat> Excuse me. A few minutes after that, a large, long-haired dog came briskly walking down the trail. I'm not going to lie, for about half a second I thought it was all over. Its owner came right behind it, a, a young lady, alone with a full pack. I told her of my encounter. She told me that Sean was at the trailhead waiting, and she continued on undetoured. Nothing else happened. We chalked it up to being a curious bear. Since then, I've had multiple bear encounters in the wild and in my own neighborhood, both brown and black bears. None of them had that long of an attention span, Steve. They did not smell like that either. I'm pretty sure that this was something else. Keep doing what you're doing with all the reports. Something is definitely going on. Not just in our forest, but in the skies above us. Stay safe, Ron. Ron, absolutely appreciate your email, man. Absolutely appreciate the respect. And you got it all coming right back to you, my man, all right? And yes, uh, I haven't said it for a while, but make sure, uh, make sure uh, for all you, when you're feeling nervous, anxiety, dread, make sure you look up too, all right? I've been cautioned that for some very knowledgeable people in the past. Make sure you look up as well, okay? Have you seen any bears behind me yet? <laughs> Hi Steve, my name is Joe. Thank you for sharing these stories. I sent an email a while back under the same subject, the big guys. Probably too long-winded to read though. Let's just say there were many sightings around my home in the mid 70s. We lived on a farm close to the border of Maryland and Pennsylvania, part of the MA and PA Railroad passing along the property and crossed a portion of the Muddy Creek, a tributary of the Susquehanna River. There's also a power plant within 20 miles of this property, so it seems like a good place for Sasquatch to be found. I've not encountered these beings myself, but I've heard enough stories from friends and family that I cannot discount their existence. There are even footprints of casts made on a neighboring property. I've always been interested in the strange and un unordinary, so I'm familiar with most of the other subjects which come along with stories of the Sabe people. From giants, orbs, UFOs, fallen angels, demons, ghosts, portals, mind speak, and so on. 
I just finished watching one of your videos and the email that you read was from a descendant of the Cherokee. He mentioned the different Sabi or Sasquatch tribes along with fallen angels and descendants of Cain along with star people. You even made the comment that it was strange that a First Nation person would mention the Bible along with other cultural stories like Sasquatch and red-haired giants who live in caves. It seems that all these things are related. You have similar stories all over the world. Symbols, ceremonies, and spoken words end up being the same with just a few minor changes that have been made through the centuries. I've read somewhere that when one of the first contacts were made with the native peoples in North America, they're able to com communicate because some on the ship knew an ancient dialect of Hebrew that was similar to the spoken language of the native tribe. Ancient Hebrew writing is also similar to the hieroglyphics of Egypt and the symbols that morphed into the alphabet as we know it now. When you ask the question of why we're not told about these beings or the knowledge is hidden or ridiculed, it seems to me that part of the answer is because of all of the mit miters. Okay, these words are broken up. End of the sentence is three letters, and then it continues to three letters, the next sentence down. That's why I'm stumbling here, okay, you guys? Religious and cultural stories around the world are related. Within them, you have what is known as the spiritual world, heavens, and the physical world, earth. These beings seem to do things that are spiritual or magical in nature. The physical world sees magic as technology based on physical properties that we do not understand yet. In the spiritual world, physics do not matter. If these beings are real and really do what people have seen them do, then what else is real? It may be as simple as those who control the physical world do not want the general public to know that the spiritual world actually exists. That would confirm either God or space aliens. Good luck with your new home and all the projects you have, and thank you for taking the time. Take care, Joe. Joe, appreciate it, man. Good read, good share. And your last statement, how true is that, right? Possibilities are endless, but that sure makes sense to me, what you said. Okay, Mark, this one is red. Another one's starting to drizzle. I'm going to have to get that camera out of the rain here pretty quick. Not too bad, I guess. Pretty quiet around here, isn't it? No birds, no squirrels, no nothing. I don't feel nervous. Okay, I'll take the challenge. Why now? I grew up in Philadelphia, PA, and had a summer which became permanent home in the Poconos. Jim Thorpe, PA to be exact. Been to the Poconos. We live two miles from the ending of the William Penn Walking Purchase. I've had multiple experiences, and you're right, I'm not dead but I've had the feeling of dread and sheer terror overcome me multiple times. One experience I'll share because the gentleman who wrote about the tall man dressed in black on a fire access road slash mountain fire line. I was 16 and told my mom I was taking a walk to the creek and I'll be back. I brought with me one of my mom's racy books with me. Hell, I was 16. I walked to the creek, which is deeper in the woods. I found my way and went to the right of the trail and sat against a tree along the Bear Creek which leads to a fishery off the Lehi, Lehi River. I started reading, and I just couldn't keep my attention because I kept hearing noises. In the woods of PA in August, you need to look out for black bear, copperheads, and timber rattlers. And then all of a sudden I heard a loud thud. I looked up, nothing. But yet I still couldn't concentrate. Then I hear bipedal footsteps and look up, see nothing. I was thinking a deer. I closed the book and took a drink from the creek. I don't, rem I don't re recommend, I remember as a teenager, and luckily I didn't get sick because we had an outbreak of Gardius, Jardius at the time, early 80s. I kept hearing loud footsteps, but yet saw nothing. And then about five feet away from me, out of the corner of my eye, I see a very large, at least 10 foot tall man, all dressed in black. I got the sudden feeling of dread slash doom, stood up. And again, I could only see an outline of a very tall, muscular man dressed in all black. I started walking deeper into the woods and heard footsteps directly beside me in pace with a much farther stride. I stop, he stops. I turn around and start running towards the path to get back home. To my left was a dairy farm and straight ahead was a neighbor. And of course, I was at least two miles from my house. But I chose the path a greater distance. It was uphill, which I had led to a gravel road to another gravel road to a blacktop road and right up another gravel road blue shady tree lane and home 
I never told anyone, because no one ever believed anything I ever said before this time. Why now? Because a lot of other people between you and David P. are saying a lot of things that I've experienced. I've had many, many other experiences, and I'm back in Philadelphia area, one mile from Philadelphia slash Bucks County border area, and things still happen. Much luck in your endeavors, as I have my own I've been going through. Oh, and by the way, by, oh, and by the by, I've told them to F off. I don't curse much. Very, very, very long story. Good luck to all, and I, and I had the flu, and it was really cranky once, and in front of three people, I just lunged and jumped into. Well, the unseen, and I was slapped back. My hand didn't make it through. I was really sick that day, too. Let me read that paragraph one more time. It's a little confusing. Good luck to all. And I had flu and was really, really cranky once. And in front of three people, I just lunged and jumped into. Well, the unseen and I was slapped back. My hand didn't make it through. I was really sick that day, too. Suzanne. Suzanne, appreciate your email. The last paragraph is a little confusing to me. Nonetheless, uh, you're a member of the club of no return. You didn't ask for it. Another one. Another member. I wonder just how, I wonder what, imagine if we had the exact number of the members of the club of no return when it comes to this topic. It's pretty freaking big, don't you think? Thanks for that email, Suzanne. And email back if you feel you have knowledge that the people are going to benefit from, all right? Appreciate that. All right, here we go. Mark, this one is red. Remember a while back, write in to tell us, share with us why they chose now to come out publicly about what they experienced. Because I wanted to tap into that a little more to ensure that we give more people more courage. Well, this is uh, titled My Reason Why. Good morning, Steve. Recently, you asked people who have shared their stories why they did. First, I've shared my stories with people. I've never been quiet about my experience or beliefs. In fact, when I told this to a new friend I'd met, he shared his story of an encounter during high school at a bonfire party. I shared my stories because I hope that others would realize that many people have had experiences and perhaps listening to one more would help them come to terms with their experience. I no longer care what people think about me. I no longer care if they choose to believe me. I just wanted to make sure people knew they are safe to tell of their experience. Hopefully it has helped. Again, Steve, thank you and keep up the good fight, Jim Ratcliffe. Jim, it's absolutely helped and absolutely appreciate it. It's, uh, it's helped so much, it's ridiculous. And I hope you don't stop. And, and, and obviously many people are going to keep uh, doing the same. The seal's broke. The seal's been broken. Cat's out of the bag. No turning back now, right? All the intelligent, aware people out there, they want answers, and we're, we're getting them, slowly. This is a screenshot of a comment from the YouTube channel sent to me, all right? I haven't a clue what it's going to say. Steve, my name is Steve Adams. I've had an experience with a Sasquatch in the North Georgia mountains of Cahuda management area. Cahuda? The beast caught a doe and killed it with ease. I was in a tree stand, about 15 feet in a tree, and after killing the doe, it started walking towards me. It walked about 10 feet and stopped, looking straight up at me. If his stare could kill, I'd be dead. He then opened his mouth and let out a loud scream. I remember seeing his canine teeth very distinctively. Distinctly. He then turned slightly and started moving up the ridge, carrying the dough like we would carry a small duffel bag. I watched him walk over the ridge and heard him scream once again. I sat in the stand for at least two hours, afraid he would be waiting for me, because somehow, his stare and scream seemed to be letting me know that he did not want me here. I now live in Florida. I'm trying to get a group together to start doing more research on the Florida species known as the skunk ape. I've started a channel. I have to get a few people interested enough to discuss the subject and even maybe go on an expedition to the Ocala Forest or Everglades to camp and research the skunk ape. Ever since my experience in 2009, I've been doing my own research and would love to get together with a few people in Florida to discuss and compare thoughts and experiences. I wish you more success and hope you stay safe. If any ideas on how I could get my channel up and going, I appreciate any advice. Thanks again, Steve Adams. 
Shit, I don't know. I'm definitely not a YouTube channel professional. I think well, what I have learned myself is um, don't mimic anybody else. Do your own thing and don't deliver bullshit and uh, treat everybody with respect. I think that might be key in creating a successful channel. I don't know. <laughs> I really haven't a clue. I've honestly never been too concerned with it. People want to hear it, want to learn about it, jump on in. If you don't, see you later. It's too easy, right? Another thing too is you can't, you can't coerce people into liking, subscribing, and sharing on any topic. I don't give a shit what it is. The amount of people that do that, and I'm just addressing your question, is a, a little mind-boggling, but I guess the majority of people mimic each other, right? I can guarantee you there isn't a person alive that could suggest to me through a YouTube video to make sure that I, I, I press that button and <laughs> like, subscribe, oh, I'm going to share it too, because they told me to, or suggested I do. It's not going to happen. If I'm authentically interested in what somebody has to deliver to the public, and I think it's valuable, and other people should hear it, I'm going to tell all my friends to watch this shit, right? Anyway, don't provide any bullshit and you'll win. Treat everybody with respect, you'll win. Help people, you'll really win. That's the key, is helping people in this whole lifetime. Why well, shared with you? Steve, I've over the years lurked at many Sasquatch sites and never felt comfortable to share as it was usually put out there as entertainment and edited to make it more so. I shared one of my more traumatic experiences with Dave Plattis as he mentioned the exact same trail I was on alone when I had a bad encounter with at least three of the forest people in North Cascades at Washington. The missing person report that Dave told about happened several years after my experience. The day hiker who was with four or five other hikers told the rest of the group to go ahead as he had something in his shoe, I think. He was never found. Anyway, Dave sent me an email thanking me for sending in the info. The main reason I want to share is to let others know to be safe and know what they could be up against in the outdoors. Thank you, Steve. I feel that you and I are a kindred spirit and share the same love and respect for the great outdoors that we are created to be part of. OMR Jordan. Right on, man. Perfect. That's a great reason. <laughs> I'm so glad to read that. Are you doing it to help people become aware? There's nothing better. Been helping people. All right, here's another one. Just one more, and then I gotta get going. I got a whole pile of stuff to do. There's no internet service where I am. The phone service, the sheriff's probably getting ready to send out the search and rescue party for me by now. My share and questions answered about why no. My sh Steve, thanks so much for the time and effort you put in this channel for us, the people. Got a bit long, sorry for that. I'll apologize now, the grammar and punctuation, as you say, oh hell. My share may seem a bit different in some ways to others' shares. However, I knew the second it happened, what had happened. I'm Chad, from Salt Lake City, Utah. Use my name, my story, and anything you'd like to. Utah has some pristine wilderness. The, the Uinta Mountains are an incredible place for me and many around. Maybe not as vast and beautiful as most of the scenes you share with us, yet special to me. In the early 90s, my best buddy and I decided to do a quick one-night camp out and possibly dip a line at some point. As the evening progressed with a nice fire, we got talking about Sasquatch and our thoughts on the topic. My buddy shared his opinion of Sasquatch possibly being Cain, sent to roam the earth and so on. I found out later with research, this was possibly a story a Mormon church leader had shared in a book or talk. Some say Mormon myth authors, others, who knows? For me, I'm lost. As soon as he finished telling me his ideas, everything and I mean every damn thing went silent. I don't remember the sound of the fire as I was sitting in front of him, but I had the most peaceful, calming feeling I believe I've ever experienced. It lasted a few minutes or hours. I honestly can't tell you how long. When sounds in life started to come back, a doe had walked into camp and was 15 feet on the other side of the fire, maybe 20 feet from me. I looked at her. She at me, and you could tell the shock of her seeing me there for the first time. She bolted and was boggy bye-bye. I jumped and slipped. I jumped and slipped, sipped my refreshments. 
My friend and I have spoken a time or two of this happening over the years, but life got in the way and distance has separated us. Very much still friends and pals, you know, ensure you understand the pals reference. I think it's about time to catch up with my buddy. Okay, as for the why now, why at this time? I've told my experience to a few people and asked if they had any of their own. A few have laughed it off, others looked back in silence, and others a worried look in silence. A few have strange feeling or feeling of absolute horror, but no admitted sightings. For me, my reasons mostly goes with, number one, finally a safe place to have discussion, gain knowledge and experience of others willing to do the same. Again, many thanks to you, Steve, as also many thanks to the others for their shares and or research and experiences. Number two, the world and times we are living in seem truly effed up to me. Sorry, many seem lost and unsure. So many seem lost and unsure. Yet little things like UFOs and such are now being reported as truth. Well, no shit, Sherlock. Glad the governments are starting to see we've known suspected for years. And then the COVID, I'm pushing for one belief, one idea only. All others are wrong or bad people. Well, sorry, we aren't the bad actors. Politics have gotten in the way of politics these days. What seems right to me can absolutely seem wrong to others. That's fine. I can deal with it and get along great with most. But then, oh, no, you can't act, think, or feel any other than what some say. It's all BS. Number three, I'm worried for our future generations, mostly my grandchildren's generation. I would hope that honest people band together as one, gain knowledge, gain trust, and put sense into our world. Yes, I know I'm hoping for too much possibly. However, what you have been, what you have going on here gives me hope. Let's find truth in many ways, become a tribe with knowledge and share it with everyone. What they do with it is up to them. Number four, do we really think we're the most intelligent or intellectual beings in this universe? I sure don't. Do I have absolute truth and knowledge? No, but guess what, I, I don't need it. Kind of seems to me the ones that believe they're the smartest are making life miserable for so many. They're in life for themselves, money and power. I want to be in this world for the success of the people, the universe. Maybe my ideas don't equal others' ideas, yet they make sense to me. To me. Use the land and resources, but don't destroy everything for those things. Replenish, clean up after yourself and others if they don't. Sure, I'd like success for myself and family along the way. But what is success? I know my ideas. I know my ideas, my successes. Thanks, Steve. I consider you a pal simply by your actions and demeanor. Pals are, are secret to me. I'm honored to call you one. Bless you and yours always. Watch your six, Chad Tanner. Okay, Chad, thanks for that email, man. Those are good words to share with the people. Great concerns. I, I think the good outnumber the bad. I just think that the bad that have uh, managed to get themselves in the position of, of control over media, actually media controls the main population, unfortunately, right? Is there a way to turn it around? <laughs> yeah, there is. Keep pushing the good people. That's how you turn it around. The bad controlling shitbags, all they got to do is keep pushing us. And then they will have to deal with wrath, right? I'll be back. I got to go win a derby. Be safe out there.